Hey, Joe Gilder here on the video I did about, I think it was the one with my five favorite Studio One features. I talked about the copying external files feature, where when you hit save on a song, after you've imported any new files, a pop-up says, hey, do you want to copy these files over to the folder for this song or not? And I like to have that on all the time because I like all my files for a specific song to be within that song's folder, not spread across multiple hard drives across my system. Because if I delete one of them accidentally somewhere else, then it removes it from that song, right? The song can't find that audio file anymore. And if it's really important, like, I don't know, a kick drum sound, I'm hosed, right? Not a great way to work. So comment from Etienne Lane says, basically, let's see, I wish Personas would give us the option to create, and very importantly, not create a new folder when creating a new project file. In other words, we create our own folder and then save our project file inside of it. I receive files for each and every song I work on, and I can't overstate the frustration of having to move these files manually into the project folder each and every time, just because Studio One creates a folder for each project. Studio One automatically copying the files Blah, blah, is not the most efficient way of doing this. So, um, first of all, th you may be onto something with your workflow. I would say, the, and the purpose of this video you already know from seeing the title is embrace the way Studio One works, specifically with file management. You're, there's, I've, I've used other pieces of software where you can choose how you want it to handle the files, and that can be nice if that's a part of the system. But if the system doesn't give you that option, which Studio One currently doesn't, I am much more of a fan of, well, how do you want me to handle files? Okay, cool, I'll do it that way. It's not that hard, it's not that complicated, and it'll make your life so much easier than trying to reinvent the wheel and have some other file management system. In a similar way, actually, when I switched to Studio One, this was a decade ago, I was a Pro Tools guy, and I tried to make Studio One be Pro Tools, specifically with keyboard shortcuts, and it was frustrating because I'd watch these videos of someone showing me a cool trick and they would tell me the shortcut to do, but it didn't work because I had mine set up to using Pro Tools shortcuts. Just just jump straight in and use the built-in Studio One shortcuts. It takes a little more time to learn, but it's just it's the way it was meant to work, and that's when I really fell in love with Studio One, was using it the way it was intended to work. Um, I'm not saying, ETN, that you're being arrogant, but for me, I know when I'm trying to make when I was trying to make Studio One be Pro Tools, there was some arrogance there that I knew best. Let's just assume for a second that the people who made Studio One know the best way to use Studio One, and then let's try to work from there. So that's the premise of today. So what I want to do is create a brand new file and show you kind of the way file management works in case you're not familiar with it and why I wouldn't mess with it. Because I get questions from people saying, man, my, files, my file system is a mess. My files are all over the computer, and I, I can't figure, I, I don't. I don't understand why they're having this problem. If you just use the system the way Studio One does, you don't have these problems. So this is the problem I'm trying to solve, is you being confused about where all your files go, okay? So first thing, let's create a new song. We'll call this Brand Spankin' New Song. The first thing we can do, in case you didn't know, is change where this song is gonna live. I don't know if maybe the person with a comment didn't realize this, but the default location here, this is, I'm on a Mac, is this documents folder. There's a Studio One folder and there's a songs folder. When I make a new song, by default, it drops it into this folder. Great. However, I personally like to put all my songs on an external hard drive because A, it fills up pretty quickly with music and B, I just, I've always had that workflow. I like to leave the system hard drive to do its thing and have all my audio streaming from an external hard drive. So I've got these little, I can't show it to you, these little Samsung, they're like, they're like the size of a credit card, solid state drives, they're fantastic. So I'm gonna pick one of those. So I click this little button and it pulls up this window, which allows me to navigate to the gray, <laughs> this is literally the color of the drive, the gray drive, and I can say, put this in this songs folder. This is where I want it to go. And I say, cool. And so now that is what's selected, as you can see here. And when I say okie dokie, here we have a song. So let's go over to Finder and let's find that folder for a second. Um, if we look into, yeah, if we look on this drive and we look on Studio One as the folder and we look in songs, we will see, ba ba bum, let's sort it by modified here. Here is brand spanking new song. And if we open this up, we'll see there's nothing inside yet. Why? Because I haven't done anything yet. Um, 
if I hit save, there might be something there. No, it's, there's not even a song file there because this is literally still nothing. I've not done anything yet. Once I create something, record something, then we have something to actually save. So let's go back to Finder. And here are just a bunch of audio tracks. I'm just going to drag in just a handful. Let's just drag in these background vocals. Okay. So I've dragged them in. It's created the track. Okay. We've got these beautiful background vocals. And then when I hit save, it does the thing we talked about in that last video. Do you want to copy these external files to the media folder? So real quick, before we do that, let's talk about where these files are located. Cool thing is Studio One tells us right here. I don't have to leave Studio One to find out. But these files are located inside my Dropbox folder. I've got a file called HSC Dropbox, audio, and then this is a specific song. And, these, and there's a tracks folder within it. So this is the file path. This is where they are currently located. That's in my Dropbox. When I say yes, it's going to copy these into the new folder that I created for this song. In my opinion, this is hands down what you should do every, every, every single time. Why? Because now, let's say I've got this song and I'm working on it, and I go to my Dropbox and I get a notification that says, hey, your Dropbox is full, um, and I need to save some space. One thing I might do is I might take this folder with all the tracks, and I might make a zip file for it. This folder is 1.8 gigabytes. I might do the right click and compress thing, which would make a zip file, which is only 1.06 gigabytes. So it cuts the file size almost in half and saves me a little bit of space. If I do that, and this song is referencing this folder that I turned into a zip file, so once it's a zip file, I can come in here and I can delete this folder, guess what? This song no, no, no longer works because this song was looking into my Dropbox folder for, to play back these files. That's the way these systems work. The song, the, uh, the song file, which if we come back over and take a look, we now have just automatically Studio One created the song file. So this is the dot song. And that is just a map that tells it where to look for all the other stuff. And the one place it looks for our audio files is in this new media folder that got created automatically when I imported the files. So now this song is looking in this folder for all of its audio. So it will always, these always live within this one folder called Brand Spank and New Song. The song is with the same title, and it's now all self-contained. Everything I need for this song is here, which means if I go and copy this whole folder to a new hard drive, everything I need to go along with that is in that folder. It's self-contained. It's, it's kind of idiot-proof, right? Um, however, if I was referencing files and, and audio from different folders, if I move this to a new computer that doesn't also have all those same folders, I'm screwed. I don't, have, I don't have those folders. I can no longer work on this song in any way that's meaningful and helpful. So that's the first thing. It has created this folder. It's created the folders that it needs within the folder, and it's all kind of living here. This is the way software has, has always works. If you click on like your app for your, your notes app, it doesn't give you all of these folders, but inside of that, hidden to your eyes, are all the folders with all the content that it has. Studio One's doing the same thing, only we let you see the folder content because that's a helpful thing to be able to see. Um, for a lot of apps, the only thing you would see is this file, this kind of custom file that says brand spanking new song dot song, and then you wouldn't be able to get to your audio. I believe that's the way, like if you had like a garage band file, it's just a single song file, big file, because everything's kind of inside of it. Um, we do we do it externally in just regular old folders, so anybody can come in and navigate and see what's going on in here. The cache folder, um, I think that has something to do with like the, the WAV file or something. Don't really care. The media folder is the one that I care about. So let's go back to what was what was the problem here. So ETN wanted to create our own folder and save our project file inside of it. Well, we did. We did. I created the folder here. I actually named it when I was doing the new song, and it created the folder for me. Let's say we want... Let's close this song for a second. Let me show you something. Let's say I wanted to create a folder for like a whole album project, right? So if I don't want... Like these are all just kind of random songs. Some are my songs, some are like podcasts, some are demo tracks. Let's say I want to have my own folder in here for a brand new project. Let's call it brand spanking new project. Okay. Now, if I want to create brand spanking new song number two, brand, brand spanking new song, brand spanking new song. That's right. Number two, I can choose where that's going to go. It says, do you want to go here? I'll say, actually, no. Let's go and put it all inside this brand spanking new project folder. 
And it says, cool, let's do that. Guess what? Let's drag some more files just to make it fun. Um, let's drag this file. All right, we hit save, copy that. I say, yeah, sure. Now let's go look in our folder. What's happened under the hood? Well, now we've got this brand spanking new project folder, and it has this brand spanking new song that has this brand spanking new audio file within it. Now you may say, well, Joe, but I want this song to be a part of this. That's not a problem either. Let's go back to Studio One. Let me close everything. So I've got no songs currently open, right? I can move this song wherever I want it to go. Why? Because all the files are self-contained, so when I open it, it's going to reference itself for to find the files that it needs. So I can drag, drag this one right into the new folder. Now I've got these two songs in here. And if I go to open this one, it's going to work just fine. The one caveat is, if I come over here and I try to open this song here, it's going to look in the last place that it was saved. So when I click this, it's going to say, uh, there's no song here. Do you want to remove this from the recent list? And I say, yeah, sure, that's a good idea. So it's no longer going to show up in my recent files list, but I can easily just come over here, open this folder, open brand spanking new song, and check out what happens. Did I not double click on it? Boink, there we go. Uh, here it is. If I close it out, guess what? Now it's in the recent files, and now it's referencing the correct folder. So when you move things inside folders, yeah, it's a little squirrely in the recent files list, but otherwise, it works fine. So then you might say, and I don't know if the comment was referring to actually a project file, which is where we do mastering in Studio One, or just referring to creating a folder. But you're basically, what you're saying here is you wish you could have a folder that you created where you could put files. You do. Just create the folder and then tell Studio One to put all songs related to that in that folder when you create them and they will all live here. Let's say, let's say for example, we want to create a project for these two songs, so a mastering page for these two songs. There's a bunch of ways to create them. One of them is to come up to the menu and to say add to project and we can call it a new project, brand spanking new song. What happens when we click that? We get a menu. So let's make this brand spanking new album. And guess what? We can still choose where that's going to go. If you have a folder already created, wonderful. If you don't, you could create one. So let's go here, open up this window, and check this out. Uh, I can navigate wherever I want. So it's going to default to this projects folder inside the documents folder. Like I said, that's kind of the default location. But if you don't want that, that's fine. It's just a couple extra clicks. I can click over here to this thing. I can go into my Studio One folder. I can go into my songs folder and I can say, let's put it in part of this brand spanking new project. Or let's do one even better. Let's say you don't even want it to live inside of that Studio One folder. Let's say you want this whole thing to live on the, like the root level of this hard drive. Well, we can do that, right? I can come in here because this is no longer just a song file. It is like a whole project now. I can drag this out and put it on like the root level of my hard drive. Here it is, brand spanking new project. Now in Studio One, when I'm trying to choose where this mastering session file is going to go, I can come over here. I know this is tweaky, but this is the kind of thing you got to under, you got to understand how your software, where it puts the files or you're going to be, you're going to have problems most likely. Um, look, now I can say, put this inside this folder. And then I can even say, I don't want there to be extra, I want it to all the mastering stuff to be contained. So I can say, um, BSP new, new album mastering, all caps. So I know exactly where to find it. And I say, okay, now it's going to do its thing. It's going to update the mastering files. It's a very, very short song. Uh, as you can see here, I'm not sure what happened there. Let me go back. Um, Oh, you know what? Dead gummit, I broke it already. Okay, so this is, I'm actually glad this happened. So here's what happened. I moved everything, and then I actually was referencing the old song. Wow. So this is where people get confused. You got to move your folders before you actually work with them. So if I go to open this song, it's going to say it doesn't exist anymore, right? That makes sense. So I can come up here. I can, someone's, okay, here come the comments. Joe, you don't even know how to use it. This is too confusing. It's basic file management. This is not anything new to Studio One. It's not a limitation of Studio One. It's just a normal way. If you want to go put things in custom folders, which that's the purpose of this video, you got to just know how it works. And it's, it's really simple once you know how it works. We just got to open this song again. Here we go. Now we can add this to the project. The project is already here. So I say, bam. It says, cool. It adds it over. It's going to render down the mix down of this song. It tells me clipping has occurred. That's fine. 
we'll get rid of it for now. But let's just assume clipping didn't occur because the files were mixed properly. Um, now I've got this song here. I can delete this first one because it's referencing something that doesn't exist. And now we've got our song here, and they're both within the correct folder that we want. So if we come back and look into this main folder on my hard drive, Brand Spanking New Project, we can see Brand Spanking New Song 1, Song 2, and then this is the mastering folder, and it created the whole stuff we need for that project here. So it's all within the one folder. It's exactly what you were asking for within Studio One while kind of keeping, keeping it the way Studio One meant it to be. Another point here. I like the idea of these tracks that I imported are over in my Dropbox folder, which means they're backed up to the cloud. So having them on a local hard drive just means I have another backup available to me. Does it mean I have twice the disk space being used? Sure, but once you're done with it, you can kind of offload this and not have it be local. It can just be in the cloud now, or you can delete it forever because you know it's over here. It's in two places, but to me, that's not that big of a deal. Um, if anything, I like them being separate. Over here in, let's say, Dropbox or inside of Studio One Plus, if you're a member, that's where people share files with me. Then I bring them into my system over here, which is on this gray hard drive sitting on my desk. And I kind of like that line of delineation, so I know when I'm moving things over from one to the other, I'm adding these new files to the existing system. I'm exporting something to send back over here. They're separate. That feels normal. That feels like the normal way professionals work. So... There you go. Hope this was helpful. Actually had a little hiccup along the way, but I hope I explained it in a way that makes sense. All in all, just know, if all you ever do is just use the built-in create a new song, create a new project in Studio One, then all those files will live in the folder you tell them to live. For example, this is my normal Studio One folder. And if I don't move things around, then all my projects show up here, which is all my mastering projects. All my songs show up here. If I want to move them somewhere else, I absolutely can. I don't know why people think that you can't. You can, um, but the built-in way of organizing things in Studio One is pretty sick, so I say use that most of the time. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next one.